Thank you. So please notice we do not have mics and use your beer voices when you're speaking. I'm going to make one correction to our agenda under Resolution C. We do not have two Resolution 17. Uh, resolution C is actually 2016-18. We're also going to have a couple changes to the claims that the Council should be aware of that we'll go over in detail when we get to that agenda, those agenda items. So, with those... Mayor, Madam Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we remove item G from the agenda. Item G? Item G. Discussion and possible motion to approve and adopt the updated procedure policy effective January 1st. Um, I'd like to send it back to the admin finance for further discussion and possible amendments. Second. 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 Yeah. Okay. I'll take so, I have a second on all changes. The two changes and we know about the current funds. Okay, so I have a motion and a second. For the agenda with the amendments. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Approve the agenda with the change here. Aye. Motion carried. Okay, I need a motion to approve the minutes from the December 5th council meeting. Okay. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. All right, under claims, bills in between. Make a motion to approve. Second. Uh, per discussion, you're aware that we removed the Black Hills Power Bill that was in there twice. So the total now is 115,477 and 20 cents. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Claims. We have a small change there. We received a credit of $59.20, which changes the current claims total amount to $35,256.37. I'll make a motion to approve that. A second. A discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, I've heard through the grapevine that we might have some communications from the public, although they have not, I have not been formally told that. So if you would like to speak during this portion, um, just address the council. You don't need to stand up. We don't have a podium or mic, so. We ask that you do state your name yeah. and your address for the minutes. That way we have that. My Good. name and what? And your address for the minutes, Oh, Brian please. Crawford. 702 University Avenue, apartment 9. I have two things. One is I want to thank the uh, city for allowing me to participate in the facade grant program. We have a nice couple of nice awnings that uh, are in now and doing a good job. Okay. The second thing is, um, uh, I have a question. Why, why does this city have so much trouble with snow? Um, my, uh, I have an apartment building down there with 10 apartments and 9 vehicles and uh, we always end up with, you know, 3 foot of snow plowed up over all the cars. You know, I've got senior people living in the building, me included, and we just can't get out. You know, why is it, I mean, I've lived in snow country for 60 years and until I moved here, there was never a problem. They put the snow in the middle of the street and removed it in a couple of days. Or they did uh, put some signs alongside the street saying, okay, on a snow day, odd, odd side of the street, park somewhere else, vice versa, or something. Would that work there? Because that's what well, I Well, there's one block about. there. That's, What's that? There's one, just one block there that's a pro always a problem. Now we're talking university, correct? On, yeah, university between... Uh, uh, Chicago and River Street and uh, it's just always a problem 
at the stoplight. Yeah, just west of the stoplight. So I'm just kind of curious. I mean, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. I mean, it's already been invented. I mean, there should be something that can be done. Uh, I, I thought about this because I know we had this issue last year as well, but putting it in that s the center is a turning line there. So I have a problem with that because then we lose our left turn line there. Mm -hmm. So I'm open to other suggestions, but I can assure you everybody who gets a, a wall of snow is not happy right now. But there's not a lot of options, especially there. I, I mean, the odd even type of thing, if you think your tenants would like play along with that, but sometimes yeah, it snows the, on Saturday night too. You know, if the city would, um, I mean, if, I, if there was some some kind of coordination, you know, I'm in town 90% of the time, um, I'm mean, actually knock on the door and say, move your car. In fact, I've done that before when I... But can I ask where you think they'd move them to where you don't think that the same well, thing would happen? The, the act, actually, the, the suggestion I have just for us to park in the empty lot on the corner. Well, that's owned by DOT. I know, and I've asked them, they Somebody's said it's perfectly all right for now. us. If you park there, you need to talk to the city and let them make the decision. Well, that's I'm not going to make the decision them. for their property. I don't think I can. Yeah, we need something out there for DOT. Have they ever we told you that? that? I've, we've talked to Rich about doing that, but we're not going to develop it as a parking lot at our expense. But it's we not our property. That, that's right? right. So we need the DOT to indicate somehow how the cars can park. So right now it's a vacant lot. Our cars can park any direction they want. Yeah, it would just be for snow removal times. You know, like we're going to get our cars off the street until they get positive. Yeah. It wouldn't be yeah. like we wanted to park there all the time. I mean, in fact, it's the truth, you know, I'd like to buy that lot once left after the, Yeah, it's pretty after prime. the county or the state does their thing. But, you know, but the one fact we have too is that lot's not plowing here, so it's about five inches, five to eight inches of snow. Uh, where most of the stands, right, for tenants, right, most of the stands, to have to navigate the parking lot. Yeah, and they wouldn't have to plow that parking lot. Well, we rarely get more than a foot at a time, but it's when they plow the entire street up into a windrow against our cars. I, I that's been a three or four foot deep and we can't yeah, move. The best scenario would be to have cars off the street while we plow the snow, because then we can really get the roads cleaned up. It's just a matter, like you said, it's important to put those cars. Yeah, and if we knew when they were going to plow, that would be... Right. Well, this we plowed while it's still snowing, where some cities wait until it's gone. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough for us to buy all areas where we're plowing. Because they call me, we want to plow your street, I could probably get... Well, the other the issue going. there, Brian, is that's a state road. I know. So we're not the only ones plowing. And, and to be honest, Brian, we'd have to make hundreds of calls like that, not only to your building, but also to the streets. As well as that neighbor part of the streets. But there are very few residents downtown. We'd be at the same thing going Well, on we plow out on North River. River. Yeah, so like in my neighborhood up by Butler Park, I see a lot of vehicles parked along the street. They're all blocked in right now because they park along the curb. It happens to a lot of vehicles besides just those down the street. Yeah. And really, the best, best scenario is get them off the curb while we're plowing and put them back and we're done. But we park them at and if they're not, they can't. Yeah. yeah. It's, 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 well, if it's snowing, they're going to be plowing. So. Right, but they're not going to come to my place and plow just as soon as it's snow. Right. I mean, it could be several hours later. I mean, if it's 4 o'clock in the morning, I'm not going to wake everybody up and have them move the car. Right? But, again, we are not the only ones that plow, plow on that state highway. That is a state so road. So who plows first, you think? Uh, on yours, it's there must be something we can do. Um, you're a high priority area for sure because you're the main arterial street, we can call it. So you'll get plowed sooner than, say, my neighbors would. So after a snowfall is occurring, yours will get plowed pretty soon after it gets enough to be where we're bringing plows out. Uh, well, I what I can do when I hear is there's a storm coming, I'll just tell them all to park. Yeah, that's, that would, yeah, that's a great idea. That would or be the park easy. on one side of the street or the other. Yeah, so for example, this I think Saturday we're supposed to get some snowfall where the plows will come out. That would be a good time to alert your tenants. Hey, we're going to supposed to get five eight inches of snow. Have your cars off in the usual parking space. Let's see if we can plow that easier. And then plow it and you guys will come back as soon as it's That might be the best part. 
they'll run the universities or not. And they're the most of the trucks that provide the place for the cars. Yeah, well, we finally got the last one on the area this afternoon. And because I had called the whole of you never want to come in there. You got to clean off. Yeah, if they can move them on the snow, so that would be great. Okay, any other communications from the public? Are you done? I am. Okay, good. And we're, we enjoy looking at the awnings, too. We're glad you got those in place. Um, help make the downtown area. Well, I wouldn't have been able to afford them just yet, and I'm not glad to help. Well, okay. we were glad to help. Thank you. Any other communications from the public? Okay, I'm going to move to our one personnel item. Um, Dallas might have come back, but he decided not to, so that's why there's the delay in the date. We got a motion. Approved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Committee reports, um, admin and finance, Carol Ann. He did meet uh, December the 12th. Brian Spitzer gave us a presentation. Uh, he's asking for basically $100,000. It's $50,000 now, $50,000 right. Later for uh, Mueller Center lights and sound updates. It's not in our budget for 2017. He sent a proposal for this to the city, but not all council members got it. At least that's what I understand. It was requested that he submit this from the Miss South Dakota board. There is support for this, um, but it would be nice if people request to make requests like this at budget hearings. He did tell us that he has potential sponsors. We discussed the conflicts uh, sheet for the council through it. It's on the agenda tonight. Job description for the council will be January 9th. We'll review the policies January 9th. And everything else is on the agenda. That's it. So the second meeting in January or the first? Because the, um, the ninth, I don't think, is a, a correct yeah. date. Is that the second yeah. meeting? Yes, yeah. that's correct. Yeah. The, the ninth is, is the yeah. second Monday. We're now council on the third or Tuesday, and the second Monday will be the ninth. And the second meeting will be the seventh. Oh, your meeting. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> your meeting, yes. Yeah. Correct. Okay. <laughs> All right, sorry about that. Frank Cramp there. Thank you, Carolyn. Appreciate it. And we do have items to address later in the program. Uh, item B, Airport Advisory Committee, Georgia. Um, there was no meeting, uh, but we do have one on the 30th at 8 a.m. at the uh, airport. And the report that I got back is they are enjoying the plow during the snow. <laughs> it's very clear now. Yeah. Big it took bed. you, yeah, it took you, you know, like a, a tenth of the time to get it done, so it was very good. And <laughs> while we're talking to the airport, the uh, Frank Maynard's going to look at grants in the new year for cameras. Okay. All right. Um, Andrea sent me her notes for the Custer Fall River Regional Waste Management District. I'm going to just read it off. Some might make sense to you, some might not. But um, the first one is they received, oh no, I'm on the wrong topic. Never mind, this is fire. <laughs> she didn't do any, nothing for that one. Nothing for that one. All right. Downtown Historic Preservation Commission, Carol Ann. I've got that. We met on the 5th. Uh, we discussed the mural at Rob's. There are more information on that in the spring. Senior Center proposed sign, work in progress. The theater was discussed. Karen Meston, one of the owners, she spoke to us and asked if anyone in the town has pictures of the theater, they'd like to have them uh, so they can restore it to the way it should look. And they'll be open maybe in April, maybe before. We talked about available grants to this committee again. I asked that we consider, if we do look for grants to the Historical Commission, that we be sure we have funds to pay our half of this budget. Uh, the <coughs> mural at 2102 Minicata was on our agenda, but it's not in the historical district. That opened the whole can of worms, so you'll hear more about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Evans Plunge. I think she's our reporter, so she likes me to have her Yeah, we actually had a meeting, but I don't have the notes from it. Because there was a special meeting held on the 7th following the meeting of the 5th. Okay. Essentially, the meeting consisted of us reviewing closure projects, looking at the ADA accessible ramp to be constructed in the closure, and also looking at hot showers and the flooring of both locker rooms. And I go about doing that. So we have contractors giving us estimates and getting those projects locked down for the January budget. And we're talking about an ADA ramp, which is pretty exciting. Correct. The the January closure is what The dates, I believe, are going to be the 23rd, it's a Monday, and then reopen on the 8th of February. So we'll tie it to that Tuesday, that last Tuesday that we closed anyway, we'll be closed for that Tuesday. And once we have that, for which we should within this week, I'll we'll update everything to the public on that. So if you go to the, the website, the first page they'll give us we're closed during these times. Give us plenty of advance notice. Thank you. Um, uh, Parks, Recreation, Beautification, and Cultural Development. Krista. Yes. Um, we got to get you an acronym. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I never remember it. Oh, okay. Um, Parks. How's that? Parks and the Sun. Sounds great. Um, we did have a meeting. The first Monday of January, but I believe that's actually a holiday. Tuesday. Yeah, so it will be on the Tuesday, the um, third. Okay, so you're going to be using it. Okay. Thank you. At three o'clock at City Hall, and um, that's it. Thank you. And this year, so we're going to do a Planning and Zoning Commission update. Our next meeting is Wednesday, uh, two days from today at 7 o'clock. Okay, thank you. And are we going to go over the notes about the PEC run? Uh, you can. 242 um, South 17. Yeah, I, I, I put... Um, I just want to make sure they saw your note. We don't yeah. have to go over it. We just, just want to make sure. Okay. okay. Yeah, we know. Okay. Um, public safety bow. Uh, meets on Wednesday. Thank you. Public Works, Tim. I know you guys met. Yep. We did have a meeting. We went over, we were presented with a list of the upcoming proposed projects for 2017. We went over them. Looks like we're going to have a really busy year. Uh, we also discussed uh, recommend that we start looking at getting some fencing around our water systems. Our pump stations are kind of just sitting out there. And what, we, what I've done or what we've done is, is we've actually, we're going to have Tracy go ahead and check with some of the fencing companies around here and get some quotes, do some different kinds of fencing and what's going on. And then when he gets that, come back and we'll be able to present it to the rest of the council instead of just sitting here, well I think it's going to be this, well I should have numbers that we can discuss. Even though it wasn't, I don't believe that was actually part of the budget, but I think we could work it in the something. Is there any fencing we have that we can use in any yeah. We When we tore down the old fencing up there, we actually hauled it out to the hot roof pump station. But we kind of went through it, and it was non-salvageable because that that was the original fence. I'm sure a lot of that was a long time ago. That was the original idea that we tore that down. Yeah, so there's going to be some of that, but but it's non-salvageable. So we're looking at getting boats for around both the tanks and uh, pumping stations. Project updates. I don't know. Talked about some stop signs that were to be put in that went through the council. I know one of them is done. I don't believe the other one is done yet. Where are we looking into that? Where goes that? The one down on Dublin and Six. Six is there. But the one by between uh, Lynn's 
Court of Art at the legislation, there on the other six, there's a yield sign on one side, and we want to replace that with a stop sign. Okay, I'll check into that. And also, I guess that was about, the only thing we did, I've got a question about is, we're ordered a lot of signs, <coughs> but we have a sign place here in town now, but I don't know what kind of signs he makes. Is there any way we can utilize them? I can follow up with Kurt. I'm not sure he's able to do what we're looking for him to do. And essentially, when you order our signs, especially the street signs, you have to be a certain DOT quality for reflectivity. Right. Kurt may be able to, but I'm not sure at the price point that we get through Pheasant Land, which is actually the Department of Corrections uh, inmates make those signs for us. Well, it's nice to support the Certainly. Yeah, Department can... of Corrections, but I'd like to support <laughs> the Department of Hot Springs for it. We can look and see if Kurt's able to do that. I know especially it's more so in, like, let's say, small business wants to sign, um, designing those, doing those, but we yeah, can we see what the cost might be. Yeah, you can check that. yeah. That's all we had. Uh, the next public works meeting will be tomorrow at 2 o'clock instead of the 27th at 2 o'clock. We're going on some stuff. You know, the way I understand it is all the guys we need to be talking to can't be here on the 27th, but it can be here tomorrow. So the next meeting is tomorrow at 2 o'clock. That's all we Thank you. So it's not a special meeting tomorrow, it's a rescheduled meeting. Right, it's a scheduled meeting. Okay. okay. Adam J. Southern Hills Golf Course Advisory Committee. Skyler had a busy week. We've been working on the golf rates for the 2017 season, and they're actually on the agenda for later to meet. Was that the, was that it? Okay, so you're, you're done yep. for the year. Yeah. Good job. Okay. And thank you. Okay, now Andrea's other item, the Volunteer Fire Department. She asked me to read her notes. Um, they received a thank you letter from a Hot Springs Family Memorial, with the, and they received a generous donation that they were very happy about. Six truck reports were read and analyzed. Um, next round of bunker gear in progress, progress, and I know this was one of the items that they um, were talking about at um, budget time, so they are working on those. Uh, rapid training coming up, a couple classes being held, wildland and air basics. So they're getting some training. Uh, starting in February, rotating locations for training. Hot Springs will be holding one of these trainings. The others will be in Pringle and Custer. Training will be held on the new truck in January for all the volunteer fire department. Um, this is one that we, I think, are more interested in. Uh, burning of the creek this spring. I thought we agreed to burn in the fall. We, so what's yeah, going on? We tried to burn in the fall. We had a very nice, mild fall, so we didn't have much for grounding up in October and most of November, and then winter hit fast, so we didn't have those 50 degree temperatures with brown rates. I did it again the day in January or February, where it gets to 50 degrees, low winds, low humidity will burn during those months. And again, we're focusing on University North as opposed to University South. So most of the duck habitat is south. south. Still, we want to get this done in February, January, no temperatures. Okay, so springs, it's really more like winter. Yeah, we've, Jim and I talked about this. Changing their notes. The fire chief, and we thought December, if we could find a day, would be ideal. But looking at the 15-day forecast, it doesn't look like December's going to allow us to do it. So if we get 50 degrees and low humidity and low wind speeds, that's when they would yeah, you know. Okay, so we're working with them on a good day before right. testing season. Yeah, before okay. things start to green up and turn into spring. Okay, thanks. They're going to burn three slash piles at the state veterans home. The date's to be determined. Uh, they discuss truck inspections to be done by foreman in charge, not wanting to pay for minor maintenance. Um, so that's our volunteer fire department's activities. Andrea is in warm Florida right now, so I got to do that for her. Um, that's it. Ordinances. Item A. Discussion and possible motion to adopt Ordinance 1171, an ordinance to amend Section 22-11, Obstructions of Streets and Sidewalks Prohibited. And this would be for the adoption of this ordinance. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. 
Any additional discussion? All in favor? Roll oh, roll 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 roll. Roll. no, you do a roll call. Sure. Roll call. I'll just do those present. Is that permissible? Yeah. I mean, I assume those absent are voting. They're not voting. They're so. abstaining. Okay. I'm pretty sure. Georgia Holmes? Yes. Bob Nelson? Yes. Caroline Schwarzenbach? Yes. Krista Spillane? Yes. Tim Tesher? Yes. Yeah. Skylar Wetzel? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Ordinance B, discussion of possible motion to adopt Ordinance 1172, an ordinance to amend Chapter 27-A, Mixed Use District I. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Any discussion? No one will you do a roll call vote? Sure. Holmes? Yes. Bob Nelson? Yes. Caroline Schwarzenbach? Yes. Krista Spillane? Yes. Tim Tesher? Yes. Skylar Wetzel? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. That goes down. Yes. Are we allowed questions on any one of these? Well, they've, they've passed, so it's a little well, late. I, for my that. question is on A, 1171. Does that change the amount of sidewalks that you can leave open? It, it clarifies just how much. Before, the ordinance stated it has to be passable without a definition. Now it states five feet minimum. Okay. The ADA standard. ADA what requirements. I yeah. That's what yeah. I it just clarifies it a little bit. It also makes it easier for businesses to place items out on the sidewalk. Before, we require permits every time we want to do that. Now you're allowed to do that so long as you without maintain permit. Yeah, that passability. Okay. Yeah. Well, I needed to know that because I have a pen. Is spread out on the sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, she's pretty aware, Ryan. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, okay. Resolutions. Item A. 2016-16. Um, resolution approving legal services agreement. Boulder Falls bond loans. And it also gives me permission to sign. I'll make a motion to approve that. I'll second. Discussion? And kind of housekeeping types of things. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item B, 2016 17, resolution giving approval to the issuance and sale of sales tax revenue bonds to finance a portion of the cost of the Boulder Falls Subdivision Street Improvement Project. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Um, item C, 2016-18, resolution providing for the issuance and sale of the City of Hot Springs Special Assessment Bond Series 2016 Boulder Falls Subdivision Street Improvement Project. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item D Resolution 2016 19 Bridge Improvement Grant Program Authorizing Submission of Application for Jennings Bridge. And we have a gentleman here from Rose <coughs> Engineering. If there's any questions, or I think I need a motion and a second first. I'll make that motion. So I explain this maybe motion. Okay, discussion. Hey, so I guess I just came down. Appreciate you. What's your name? My name is Ross Everly. Thank you. Project. I've been working with Nolan and Tracy on the project here. Uh, preliminary engineering, hydraulics, and analysis is wrapping up. We actually have a uh, have a, an inch and a half, two inch thick binder that I left with Nolan earlier today, and I kind of summarized some of the stuff in the packet. But uh, it kind of goes through what we looked at for uh, bridge replacement or bridge rehabilitation. For the Jennings Avenue Bridge, we were part of the hydraulics, and I talked to Tim and Bob and Nolan and uh, 
Tracy earlier this summer and kind of anticipated that rehabilitation would be over 60% of what a replacement cost was. And none of our analysis has came out to that uh, effect yet. Um, we're looking at a couple options for, uh, we're looking at three options for the bridge replacement. We're pretty fixed on what we can do. We can't really raise it because the streets tied in. Divider coming through in the new gray alignment. Um, pretty fixed with that. And so, kind of keeping the span to say um, a couple of our bridge alternatives. We think we can, we can we actually take out the mill here for a replacement and just do a single span. New technology allows us to go a little longer with, a, with an open span now. So, we have a couple options that we're looking at. We scheduled a meeting uh, next Wednesday. With the DOT, they see it all in the city hall here. They look at the site, it's called the type, size, and location, and you can basically select the type of bridge that you would go into the replacement um, to design for. This resolution, in order to get qualified for the grant uh, application, that's uh, what you have in front of you is that resolution to apply for the grant, which is 80% uh, participation and reimbursement by the state for eligible items. There are a few items that aren't eligible, such as the water line, you know, you know, adjusting utilities that are connected to the bridge, uh, asphalt treatment on both ends, typically is not, which will have a little bit of uh, an eligible cost that they participate in. Part of the DSML is to get that all squared away and negotiated. Let's say you wanted a decorative railing or something out there that might be above and beyond what the state would not do. They may say, oh, we are, we'll only participate at this certain point. Part of what we do is we to discuss those items at the case as well. Um, what I did here is we laid out a couple alternatives for the sidewalks and the So there will be sidewalks on both sides? Well, we're looking at, I talked to Nolan a little bit about... Because it looked like only one in the drawing. Yeah, and there's two alternatives kind of laid out for examples. One with the five-foot sidewalks on both sides yet, which is kind of what they have right now. And right. You know, they only had a 24-foot wide, 12-foot lays with no buffer zones in between the sidewalk. Right. What's recommended is to allow a 2-foot buffer between that sidewalk. So the new bridge I have for feet wider than the existing bridge with those with either five foot sidewalks on both sides as an example or I gave another example where we take the eight foot sidewalk that's on the park side and continue to across them on one side with an eight foot sidewalk is a potential conceptual idea as well. Part of that is to discuss that with you and Nolan and Tracy what would be the city's preference um, and discuss that everything else go with the city could be you know, from a granting funding as well. There's quite a bit of foot traffic there. I would really hate to see it go to one side. I think that would make it a more dangerous intersection if people had to cross there. We've got the Freedom Trail, we've got a park there, yeah. we've got... That, that's kind of the thing too, is the Freedom Trail is already eight feet, so if we were to tie that eight foot sidewalk symbol, it look like an extension of the trail. The way the DOT is proposing their crossings, it wouldn't be on inside, I guess, by the police department. It's on the other side by the Bruce building. So that might work in that favor. And we can look at it more closely and see which alternative looks better. Yeah, I, had, I mean, if had, I had only one sidewalk, I'd put it on the opposite one. And you, I think uh, that's what you north side? South. Okay. South. North might make more sense given the DOT's pedestrian crossings. Where? The north side. The DOT has proposed a crossing on Jennings. So and those kids that go from that daycare have to cross the highway to get over to the park. Right? They would cross on South River, North River, between Jennings and University by the Cruise Building, and then way. cross right in front of the bridge on Jennings. I see. Mean, that's part of why we don't want to like talk that. about. <laughs> we just, yeah, we just don't have any sidewalks on the other side. <laughs> that's why I kind of want to make sure we have five. I don't. Know. I mean, and, and the possibility to go with. Eight or something, but um, potentially, if you want to do that, you might not participate on the full cost yeah, of the council. So, 
that's why we put those two options in there. And that, that's why I wanted to comment on it too. Because yeah, I, Nolan and Tracy and I will take that to the state and I don't know what the preference is. We can discuss it a little bit maybe at your public first meeting uh, tomorrow. But it might be a, a helpful those are the type of things, the dimensions and the width, type, size, and location. That's what I mean. I think it would be better for people to cross over there in the parking lot as opposed to right there on the highway. Yeah, I mean, it's exactly. We'll, we'll go over the site design. We'll get the Austin PHE's plan showing project sidewalks. It's actually, it's off the highway. Because it's back. Yeah, that's kind of how they propose. They propose it to continue just, along the west side of the state highway here. The dynamics of that corner, though, people, I, I see tourists going straight over that park, not even realizing they're crossing the double yellow line. And it's now a, a crosswalk with everybody well, having to go to that north side. We'll take a look at the drawings. The rich sauce is coming to uh, a game as well. I thought they were coordinated with, uh, with the state project going on. It's, we need to tie this all together and make sure it all fits, whatever, whichever one comes first, <laughs> and uh, we're coordinating that intersection uh, so it gets designed so we can find this. And how, so the bridge will be completely unusable for some period of time? Yeah, so that, that will be during the construction season. I talked to Tracy a little bit about using there you go. Thank you. And um, we talk, you know, a little bit about uh, potentially relocating, working with the fire department a little bit to uh, get access to. You know, it could be difficult when you're know, using that street. So um, we need yeah, to coordinate that during the design phase a little bit more. Yeah. It may be worthwhile to talk to the fire department and stage you put it elsewhere, or at least some of it. That's. So I mean, that's, that's a big concern of ours right now. I mean, we could put a temporary bridge, but then you know, yeah, we we've already discussed. So we talked about that alternative routes for the fire department. It's not like we can make that work. Yeah, they'll just need to pull the fire. We're looking at about a three-month construction window. Typically, that's how that is. The biggest problem we have with the fire department on that bridge is when we don't tell them and we close it. Yeah, no, definitely. right, cranky. And rightfully so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's pretty important. But then that's kind of where we're at in the process. Um, the applications we, we need to get submitted. Uh, we'll have our PSNL meeting and we'll actually submit an application. Um, they have a one page form, but it ends up being about a 15, 16 page document by the time we have attachments and uh, write a narrative of why it's really important <laughs> for the city uh, to get funded and, and so the final design's gonna be next week We review it next week. We review the the preliminary and decide what uh, yeah what we what we really want to do for we would give the DOT a fair idea and see how that corresponds with that's what that's gonna be next week when yeah. everybody's up. And our cost is going up four hundred well, six hundred thousand. Yeah, well, no, that's kind of where we talked to some. I don't know what you guys yeah. talked about, but that's what we discussed in June. And, and uh, it's pretty much still there as far as our filling as, as we get into design, we get more defined. But, uh, I guess I work on a conservative side. I talked to Bob and Tim a little bit about that, too. Just to, we got to remember, this is most likely two years out. Um, and so, you know, you got to take into account to, to so, as far as construction. So the meeting... Next week, the week between Christmas and New Year's, um, that's just a meeting to. It's a meeting to discuss the alternatives that we laid out here as far as what type of bridge uh, for a replacement structure that would be designed for construction and we go through construction. So, uh, it's a decision document that's, that uh, we use to keep the project moving along and do the plot for the grants so we know. What, what day are we talking? That's next Wednesday. Yeah. If you guys would like to be more involved in this process, come to the City Hall this week and we'll go over the documents that we were given today.
clarify things. I have a question about the cost. If you look at that cost breakdown table, some of those costs are outside the scope of the option for the DOT funds. You know that we're not going to pay for temporary relocating or temporary water services that follow that bridge. That's on us to do in addition. So definitely if you have questions or if you want to see the details, stop in this week with me and we'll go over those and pay as long as you guys need to see them. Yeah, I didn't think if you had questions. I kind of went over this with Nolan because they, you know, you guys are do a good job of keeping this moving along and we don't want to bog it down. But if you had questions, I just kind of put a spreadsheet together in there and you kind of show for each option. Um, one of the things we probably should discuss though is is the uh, fine for the grant. Uh, and there are some points that you can gain by participating more on the local cost share. Typically most applicants just use 20% because it's maybe money program. If you want to just position yourself a little bit better and you have the resources to do that, somehow laid it out in this, this section. Um, for every 3% of each points that you participate in the construction cost and construction design engineering, the total project cost basically you would get an extra point in the point system that they use for ranking the project, selecting the projects, selection of the So you have this 100 point system, but really in reality about the maximum, most people can kind of get it is around 70 points. It's uh, pretty difficult. Uh, some get a little more if there's a dead end street and there's no other alternative in the house. That's it. If you have a bridge that's even worse than ours, which there are bridges like that out there, and if you have a bridge that's high critical passageway, so if it's their only means of egress or ingress in and out of the city, then they're going to score higher on that schedule, if you will. Even though ours serves the fire departments, it's tough to quantify that in there. The way they have it right set up right now is uh, don't give it a lot of credit other than you know, that's a tiebreaker or something like that. But, you know, we're going to look at it as very important with, with the fire department. And it'll, it'll catch eyes. Uh, because it serves the whole community, not just <laughs> uh, Springs either. So right. it's, it's much bigger yeah. than, than just on Springs. Yeah, they go outside the city limits. So. I think the selection committee definitely will look at that. On the other hand, the way the program, and it's still developing, it's, it's only it's in, it's in, it's only a year old. And so the rules, and are adjusting a little bit. And when I met with Bob and Tim and Public Works Committee uh, back in June, I think it was, they didn't have the new rules. They amended them since then. Uh, at that time, shovel ready kind of meant we could get plans out in six months and they'd get, they'd get some extra points for that. Well, the new rules came out and said, no, now you have to have final plans completely designed right away. Everything signed off on in order to get uh, get that extra point. Well, that kind of was a. I was hoping for that. We were kind of hoping for that. So uh, if we don't get selected, I guess that's another option that you can move forward on your own with the design, get that done. So next time it comes around, be eligible for the financial points. Just something to keep So okay. these are kind of eligible every year. So you have to compete in every yeah every year. It's an annual application. You can compete across the whole state um, for these these funds. So you have to use it within this coming year or when? So they give you a typically it's a three year program, three year time frame for you. Once you're awarded a project, to utilize the, the funds. That you have. Okay. So um, that's how it's set up. Size up, you know, that's kind of why we laid out the schedule. You know, it's tying in with the street project. But we have to be careful when that happens too. So ideally we just proceed that that project. So we got our bridge in place and we'll do their their section. Because then in 2020 they could go south to Dr. Island for the first stretch as opposed to north to Tomash. So it could be 20 to that section. Um, the first thing is to do the application and, and see where we go. Uh, 
I think for some reason my understanding is if we don't get it this time around, this gentleman will continue on with this. It's not a complete yeah. dead issue. Yes, that's that's spot on. That's what we've talked about is, is to, to keep positioning ourselves the best we can over for a grant to receive a grant. Yeah, as much as every fire truck goes through that bridge. Yeah. Well, that's not the thing. It's, it's right now, it's, it's reduced loading, but I mean, it's, uh, the deck is in very bad shape. We analyze it. Um, it's not in the critical stage where we're looking at it every year. Yeah. Questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'm going to move to new business. Discussion and possible motion to approve replat lot B9 32A and lot B9 32B. A back nine addition and a private access easement. I'll make that motion. Second. Any discussion? What do we do, Bob? It's just granted an easement. No, it's it's a split and an easement for a duplex. It's written on the uh, description that I just handed out before the end. This is an existing lot with a newly constructed duplex on it. The Planning Zoning Commission reviewed this at their November meeting and recommended approval of the replat. They have to do a split in order to sell each of the duplexes. So the property line actually goes through the middle of the structure. Really? Through the fire line. Okay. We did this before, didn't we? We did it a couple of times now. Give a motion and a second. Any other discussion? People are kind of looking at notes. So. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item B. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Discussion and possible motion to approve replat Hart Genstein track of block 37 of second Minicata edition. And you have notes on that also. You have a motion for me to approve it. Second. Discussion. This is a simple merger of individual lots into one parcel with an existing house requested by the owners of the property. Multiple lots going to one lot, right? We've been doing that a lot with the lots. Any discussion, questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. All right. All right, item C, discussion of possible motion to approve the 2017 cost of living Increase for full-time employees and the airport manager effective January 1st, 2017. Um, I have a question. Are you guys aware how this affects people that are still going through the step process the first five years? The step process is based on a percentage, so I think it goes to the same 2% or 3%. How, how it's been done in the past is that they'll get this adjustment in the first and then the next time they have their step, let's say they have their step in February, they would still take whatever percentage of their top of scale and it'd be that be their new rate. So it could effectively eat into that cost of living adjustment but they would still receive a pay increase based on their total, based on their, based on their scale increase. So 
they get 50 cents January 1. And then in February, if they were per their percentage expected to get a dollar, let's say, it would only be 50 cents. Okay. So they're really only getting a 50 cent step increase instead of a dollar increase. <coughs> so people in the, is that right? That's how it works out, yeah. And I didn't think you guys thought it was that way. That's why I'm sure you understand that. 50 cents would go on the top of the scale, and yeah. this percentage of that when it comes step time. Because COLA has nothing to do with the step time. Yeah, COLA is right. cost of living. The, the one thing, though, is COLA starts at the 1-1, one, one, and then their step happens throughout the year. So then right. we'd have to clarify in the motion that COLA would be added to whatever step they receive. And that includes longevity. So longevity would be times 0.5%, and you add the 50 cents after that when it takes place. So someone who's already passed the five-year step program would get the full benefit of the COLA, whereas someone still in the process of it would not. Well, and remember the cost. Unless you put it on top. And remember that COLA only happens if there is a cost of living. Yeah, which our COLA is higher than what other COLAs have been for competing agencies. Yeah, well, we didn't get one last year. Right. Right. But I think, I, I just want to make sure the council understands because I've received feedback from employees that those that are still in the STEP program feel like they're not getting the full benefit of the cost of living raise because it affects their percent and therefore they really don't get a cost of living raise. I guess the way I always thought it was is this cost of living if you're, if you're top, yeah. your steps are based on your top wage. So if you got a cost of living of 50 cents, that would be added on to the top wage. Mm -hmm. So the top wage would be $5.50. Exactly. And then when you come to your step time, that's a whole different thing right. than your cost mm -hmm. of living. Then your step raise is based on the percentage of that top wage. Yeah. Everybody would automatically get this 50 cents. And that's the way I understood it too. So you probably need to state that in the motion. Okay, well, we... We should be able to just clarify. Do you all understand what Tim just stated? Mm -hmm. In that case, is that your motion then, Tim, is to apply the COLA with the step whenever they incur their step? So yeah, if it's in February, it'd be the step plus mm -hmm. COLA? Right. Okay. So if we're yes. clarified there, that's yeah. the motion. That's the second, correct, Georgia? Yes, that's okay. what I made. And that's what's being voted on right now. <laughs> so step plus COLA for those that are in the, still in the step program. Yeah. Those that are past the step program just get a longevity plus COLA. Right. So no, I'm confused. I just want to, <laughs> yeah, that's why I want to talk through this because I want to make yeah. sure you guys understand. What's what's tough with longevity is it comes after COLA. So you take their 0.5% times what they're currently making. When you're in your step, when you're in the step process, it's the different, the other way around. You get your COLA first and then you do the calculation based on top of scale. So we just be adding the COLA to their top of scale, top of scale for those who step in. Right. Everybody would get the initial 50 cents, and then when it comes step time, they would get their new rate times 3.5%. Right. right. And that's where I'm confused. I always understood COLAs to be separate from any other increases that an employee is eligible to get. COLA is applied the first of the year, whatever the consumer price index right. is or however you decide. So everybody is going to get that COLA at the first of the year. Right. If that's you gonna, approve that's, it. Yeah, that's going to establish all of your new rates. Right. So well, that's the, what is for being proposed. Well, that, that's what that's how I've under, understood them okay. to work. So it, it, you don't reapply the COLA when somebody is eligible for a step increase. No, it's already been no, applied at the totally first of the year, and it's going to be factored into whatever step they get. That's how I was interpreting this to happen. So you're saying that's not how well, this is written? That's what we're saying. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so if somebody's top of scale is, is 10 bucks, it's now 10 50 if, we, if this is approved. In yeah. January. In January. January 1. Well, sorry. Their top of scale does not change. No, but that you It's their existing top of scale, you multiply it by, say, whatever percentage, and then you would add 50 cents. But you wouldn't change our top of scale. 
Well, the, the cola might be three cents. Well, how do you remember next year that to keep that 50 cents in there? That's where that's expensive. That's why I've only done one cola since I've been here, and that was in 14 and 15. And how it was done then and implemented then was you received it on the first, and if you do a step, it gets eaten up as you step. So then the people who are still in the step program are penalized. Correct. And I didn't know if that's what you, if the council intended that to be that way. Yeah. That's no one's defense here. That's what you guys called it at budget time. 
Okay. So. And you seconded that, yes. and now do we have more nods and understand? I'm looking. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to do a vote now. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. We've got great employees. It was worth the discussion. Thank you. All right, item D, discussion of possible motion to adjust permanent part-time and current seasonal employees Compensation to the new state minimum wage effective January 1st, 2017. I think we have a motion. We do. So somebody second it. I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, item E, discussion of possible motion to approve the Southern Hills Golf Course rates for 2017. It's in your packet. I'll make a motion. Discussion? Basically, basically, it's stating there's no changes really, just that the taxes are included. Is that correct? The taxes are not, not I mean, included. not included like they were last year. <laughs> we are not paying their taxes for them. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Well, that's reasonable. Yeah, well, there was four changes to the golf car storage. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and there, by the way, there's a correction. <laughs> it says that the car can go in the golf car. been 
have some rumor or whatever that there is some conflict in this the council we have now. I can't understand you. I say I believe I've heard that there is some some conflict of interest issues with the council we have now. The thing is if we put this in, we vote this thing in, we're not voting it in just for us. We're voting it in for the councils in the fight of the future. And I can see this thing turning into just like our code of ethics. We voted that in at the time that there was a problem. We thought we had a problem. The problem that we thought we had has since gone away. But it's still However, away. we are no. not just wait till I'm done for a minute. Excuse me. However, we are still stuck with what was written in that code of ethics. Even though the problem we were trying to eliminate doesn't exist anymore. That's the problem I have with these things. If you vote this in because you think that there's something going on now, or because somebody said some big city, you should have it. You're stuck with that. Those people don't even know us. They're just, they, they recommend it to every seminar they go to. They didn't recommend it because we this, thought someone had problems here. This, is, this is the kind of thing that in a big city, you can run into that. In a small city, you're going to have it. There's no doubt about it. Everything that comes up, if you want to nitpick it, we can find that there's a conflict of interest with somebody on the council. Uh, did you review the memo the attorney provided? They do a pretty good job clarifying just what would be an excusable conflict of interest. So it's most important to direct. I'm just saying that's, what, that's the problem I have with these. You guys want it? Fine. And our Those code things of scare me when you start putting stuff down on paper because then you're locked in. Right now, our all our personal stuff says if there's a conflict of interest, you're supposed to say so. That's already in our personnel. That's on every agenda. Well, then our code of conduct is. Are you saying you want to make you can make a motion, throw it out if you don't like it? The motion's already been made. No, you saying. can get rid of the code of conduct. Oh, any any council that sits can get rid of it. You act like it's the Bible. It's not. Well, now, this wouldn't be either. It's not. Some of, no. <laughs> you can go out to get. I wouldn't vote to get. I wouldn't vote to get rid of it. I think it's a valuable document. <laughs> anyway, well, I'm just, there. What any I'm other? saying is, is, is just. I'm just saying, be careful. I'm not mm -hmm. saying right or wrong. I'm just saying, be careful. Think, not just what's happening today. But what can happen after July next But I'll just I just state that this has nothing to do my voting with anyone sitting on this council. Nothing. Yeah. This is just yeah. not part of it. <laughs> nothing to do. Okay. Yeah. Any other I'm getting calls from City Hall. I don't know. Okay, um, I have a motion and a second on the conflict of interest. Any other discussion? Comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. I think I still have a motion carried there. Small group. Two, three, four, five, yep. Yeah. Okay. Motion carried. We moved item G, moving to item H, discussion regarding forum at committee meetings. Um, proposing this as a discussion only because we've never really had this situation before, we too often, but we had um, But we had a lot of interest in our um, having a finance meeting lately, and we had a situation where two council members had to meet. By presence. Um, of course, the two that left had an interest in being in the meeting and were concerned, you know, I mean, they did the right thing in the meeting, but um, what I'm missing, I'm missing Nolan and I have talked about this, and, you know, we don't want to just do a blanket notification because it has to be in the paper, it has to be 24 hours notice. 
Not in the paper, yeah. but 24 hours. We have notified the star, we have to post it on our website, post it on the window. And also, if you're the public and you always see a notice of quorum, you're not going to most likely attend as often because you don't know if there's actually going to be one or we're just being saved by a second one. So it might discourage participation if possible. Well, it probably discourage well, it's like for Yeah, if every meeting you have has one, then there may not be that urgency that we do have to have one for those people who attend to hear what's going on. Also, That's sometimes like Tara stayed, she really wanted to hear the first part of the meeting and she'd heard that. So mm -hmm. she was probably... So it kind of worked out for right. one. Yeah. And maybe people come for the part they're interested in then someone else can leave. There's a couple of options that you guys can consider that we've thought of. The first one is that blanket always announces a quorum at all of our meetings. The problem is we have about 15 meetings a month and that's going to be difficult to do for us. The other option would be if you plan to attend, just notify us within 24 hours before that meeting so we can count heads and at least know there's going to be one. We'll do our back end work to say there's going to be a quorum. I don't think I do a blanket. Doesn't hurt anything. Well, it's a lot of overhead for staff. Yeah, yeah. We, have to make and we need to be respectful of that. When it seldom happens. I, I think anybody can come to any meeting they want to, just let no one know. You want to come to a meeting, and then if enough people let him know, they'll say and, and if, you're plan, if you're not the committee chairperson or regular chair attender. or regular attender, and you're planning to come based on an agenda item, New interest in that type of committee. Just let Mr. Nolan know, and then they can count. They can do the count because you're not going to know what four other people are planning to attend. The chairperson might even be gone then. You know, I mean, there's just so many. It's very difficult to herd. I won't call you cats. But eight cats. people. <laughs> you know, and to have the overhead of a quorum would be like a council meeting. It just doesn't happen that often. It happens, and, and we'd absolutely encourage you to attend meetings that you have an interest in. We just want to not create a lot of overhead for City Hall staff when it, it's not that frequent. I'm not sure I know what overhead you said. If you did a blank, it would be a community. Each time you had a meeting, you would have to post it on the window, send it to the star. No, we're going to post it on the not for each committee meeting on the window, no. Only for the council, we put the agenda up for the rest of the hall. We would have to no put notes of quorum, quorum for the meeting, meeting name, send that to the star, post it on our website for each meeting. I just think it's easier for us to call. You do. Just call. Just call. Yeah. I, I was volunteering with the Department of Finance because it was going to be a simply call. And if you do let me know, I will let them know. That, that's it. Yes. Okay. We have they three resources. If we're accessible. Text is fine for me. Misty, any message that goes to her will probably end up with my desk too. So yeah, we're pretty fluid with how we communicate. The bottom line is, is we don't want anybody to have to leave that wants to be there. That's mm -hmm. what we're trying to fix. We don't want to create a lot of overhead for every meeting with the blunt. You know, there's just too many. I, I think it's good to post them anyway, so the public knows what we are. Well, we, we do have the meetings posted. We post our But we don't have to post agenda. it as a quorum or the agenda. So we, we post our calendar and get that out. We have it on the community calendar website as well. Um, we're pretty transparent in that. It's just we don't post what a committee agenda is something. We don't want to post council agenda. It seems like we have a pretty good indication of how we should proceed. If this wants to be brought up again, we can certainly do so. But from our standpoint, it sounds like you guys have been heard. So I mean, if there's, if you're, most of you are always wanting to attend the admin and finance, and we know that going forward, then we I think as a council president, I should probably. And I did understand that that, that could still be just three yeah. of So I probably, I probably I mean, Andrea usually comes, and that's the only person I know of who schedules her day off. Right, which is great. But that's still three. No 
Um, like one other thing. But thank you all for a good year. We got a lot done. Appreciate uh, Cooperative Council and uh, working together to do great things for our city. It means a lot to me. So I, I appreciate all your efforts. Very thank you. To you. Thank you. And thank you all for coming. Appreciate it. Good to be back. Yeah. yeah. It's good to be in that spring. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Somebody ask it. I'll second it. Right. All, all favor. Hi. Right. Right. You can stay here all night. <laughs> <laughs> like whatever you do. Oh. <laughs>